Hi, I'm Emily Rickman. I'm an astronomer for the European Space Agency based at the Space Telescope Science Institute, which is home to the Missions Operations Center of James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. So an exoplanet is a planet that orbits around a star outside of our solar system. So we have planets that orbit around our own sun, but other stars have other planets that orbit around them. So that is what an exoplanet is. And we can use JWST in order to directly observe exoplanets and also use different exoplanet detection techniques as well. The technique I'm mostly interested in is direct imaging, and that is quite literally taking an image of a planet next to the star that it's orbiting. So the first directly imaged planet by JWST was observed as part of the early release science program, and it was HIP65426, which is the telephone number for the planet we have, which will be renamed by the community soon. So this planet is several Jupiter masses in mass, so it's a pretty massive planet, um, but we need this in order to actually be able to directly observe it. It's very difficult to directly observe exoplanets. The reason that this planet was chosen was it was an already previously known planet from ground-based observations. Um, so we knew that something was there for us to observe and was very interesting, but also to prove the scientific capability of what the instruments on board JWST are able to do with direct observations of exoplanets. Uh, so yeah, so we confirmed what we know about this planet, we confirmed its mass, uh, its luminosity, but the really exciting thing is that we proved that we can get down to those extreme contrast ratios in order to observe sub-Jovian planets in the future, so things that are less massive than our own cool gas giants in the solar system, and actually really probe out to that mass regime which we haven't been able to do with direct observations before. So now we know what the capabilities are really like, and now we know we can get to those contrast ratios that we really need uh, in order to observe down to those less and less massive companions that we haven't been able to do before. That's the next thing for the community. So really looking down to those Jupiter mass or even less uh, massive planets than that, because to date, we've only been able to observe those very, very massive uh, companions. And ultimately, in the future, we would really like to probe down to those terrestrial planets. So I'm talking about things at the moment that are gas giants like Jupiter, Neptune, Saturn, and our own solar system. But in the future, we really want to be able to probe down to those masses that are representative of our own Earth, and Mars, etc. And so this is the way that the community will be moving for the direct imaging of exoplanets. And the sensitivity of JWST will really allow us to start moving in that direction. So I will say that not only directly observing exoplanets is really awesome, but for the first time we've been able to probe high resolution spectra directly of exoplanets that we've been looking at. So also as part of the early release science high contrast imaging program I mentioned previously, we also looked at a planetary mass companion for the first time using the instrument NERSPEC and also MIRI, and that allowed us to look at the spectra in high resolution from one micron all the way through to 20 micron, which we haven't been able to do before for directly observed exoplanets. This meant we were able to probe different atmospheric properties, look at different molecules that we hadn't been able to observe in that level of detail before. And for the first time ever, we were able to observe silicate feature in a directly observed planetary mass companion. And so this is just the beginning of what we're able to do with spectroscopy and imaging with JWST of directly imaged exoplanets.